Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is the Not So Serious Keto video podcast on a Wednesday instead of a Monday. I had mentioned, oh gosh, how was that three or four weeks ago in a podcast that my schedule, my filming schedule, and my release schedule were going to have to be kind of fluid, uh, at least for the month of August, probably September, and who knows how long after that. Just with all the things that are going on in my life, the biggest being, well, biggest and simultaneously physically smallest, the birth of my second grandson, Calvin. And Sunday, which is when I normally record the podcast, it was Connor's birthday. So we went out for brunch, and then the place we went to, it's called The Mine Shaft. They've got this big game room, and we're hanging out there. And let me tell you, I was an absolute boss on the claw machine. So I wound up scoring over 6,000 tickets on the claw machine, which was enough to get Colton this stuffed monkey that he wanted to get. That monkey's name is Mr. Bananas now, and he may be showing up in some future video, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Anyhow, then we went back to Connor's house, Connor and Jaden's house, and hung out, and, you know, I just, I love, I love, love, love holding my little grandson, and I got the first smile out of him on Sunday. That is just, it's, it's the coolest thing in the world. I mean, if, if there were a drug that would make me feel the way I feel when I get a smile out of one of my children when they were a baby or Colton when he was a baby or now Calvin, I would take that drug nonstop. It is, it's just the coolest thing. But anyhow, like I said, schedule a little bit goofy. On top of that, my schedule is always a little bit fluid Lots of times based on whether a recipe turns out or it doesn't turn out or if some new product gets released or a new flavor of keto chow or a new type of bun from Unbeliever Bun or some sort of a promo that's going on with Chalk Zero, not anymore, John Chalk Zero because they don't have an affiliate marketing program anymore, or Perfect Keto or just whomever. There may be some special deal and that winds up shifting my schedule around. So anyhow. I guess what I'm saying is expect that to continue and let me just thank you all in advance for recognizing that we're not going to have the standard Monday podcast, I'll do it from your, your perspective, Monday podcast, Wednesday product review, Friday cooking video all the time. We all got to be a little bit flexible. I'm going to start this podcast with just two short random topics. The first is I signed up for a 5K. I've never really been into running. In fact, there was a long time in my life that I just hated running. And I decided I was going to, well, I'm not going to say learn to like running, but learn not to hate running. And I'm not doing this as a weight loss thing. I'm doing this to improve my overall cardiovascular health, which according to the ultra human ring, I'm 61 years old in terms of my cardiovascular health. So I want to get that down below my actual biological age. And I had I'd been fairly consistent on getting up in the morning and running or walking, depending on what day of the week it was. But I kind of started slacking for a little while at the beginning of August. And, and now I'm back on track. And the way I got back on track was signing up for a 4, no, a 5K. Signing up for a 5K in the middle of September. So that's now sort of a, I think we referred to that as a forcing function back in the business world. I've always found that when I have a deadline to work up against, I get a lot more excited, a lot more motivated. So doing the 5K, I think it's September 15th, but the goal is that my overall time on it is sub 24 minutes, which would mean I'm a sub eight minute mile, which was, I don't think I ever hit below eight minutes in my life, including in college when I was running a little bit. So that's my goal there. I'll let you know how it goes. It has nothing to do with keto. The next topic is going to seem not keto, but I'm going to try and loop it back in. The other day I was at Costco, and I go there about once a week, but we're low on softener salt, so I bought some softener salt, and usually softener salt, at least when I get it at the hardware store, is 40-pound bags. They're 50-pound bags at Costco. And as I was carrying them downstairs to put in the water softener, I thought, wow, this is not enjoyable. It is just, it's not enjoyable lugging 50 pounds around. And then it occurred to me, I used to lug around probably around 75 pounds just on my body, nonstop, all day long. No wonder I was miserable. No wonder I was in pain. And I love those sort of aha moments where I, I remember 
what it used to be like pre-keto, pre-weight loss, just the overall daily discomfort that I was in, lugging all of this extra weight around. Now, granted, it was probably a little bit more evenly distributed, so not putting quite so much uh, force or impact on my lower back as I was carrying them, but still, I think you get my point. I'd love to know down in the comments below if you have had any of those sort of aha moments or epiphanies where you suddenly just, it dawns on you, wow, life is so much better now that I'm keto. Life is so much better now that I've shed these extra pounds. Please let me know. I love those stories. They're awesome. One more brief topic before I get into a series of topics that I think are all sort of linked together, and that is keto baking. I've mentioned this before. I don't do much in the way of keto baking or keto baking videos. When I first started keto, I was a lot more interested in keto baking. But it just, it was so frustrating to me. I loved baking pre-keto. I loved making artisan bread. And the reason I loved it is it was predictable. Keto baking, not so much. And, and it just involves so many more ingredients. And I found that my pantry, probably around three, four years ago, was just stocked full of all of these different flours that are keto compatible. Almond flour, coconut flour, uh, oat bran, oat fiber, all these different fibers and powders and psyllium and uh, flaxseed and chia and all of these things that you can use in keto baking. And they've just been sitting there sort of largely untouched for the better part of two to three years. And the other day I was thinking, oh, wow, I, I want to do this one recipe that calls for a little bit of almond flour. And it occurred to me that the almond flour that was in my pantry probably expired a solid two years ago. So I went through and just did a complete pantry clean. And uh, this doesn't mean you're going to start seeing any baking videos from me because I, I wound up throwing away an awful lot of stuff. But I do now have some fresh almond flour. So if I need to use that in any sort of a recipe or video, I'll have it. But ultimately, when it comes to baking, I just, I far prefer to leave that to channels that are better than me. You know, Carolyn Ketchum at All Day I Dream About Food, Indigo Neely, Alicia at Keto Upgrade, those are the ones that come to the top of my mind. Um, I'm sure Heavenly Fan has got some, some baking videos as well, but I am completely comfortable in letting all of those other channels do that sort of stuff, and it has freed up a little bit of pantry space for me, so bonus there. A big reason I started Serious Keto, and the reason I continue to do Serious Keto, is I want to be a helpful resource to the entire low-carb community. So whether you're carnivore or ketovore or clean keto or dirty keto or lazy keto or low-carb or reduced carb, whether you want to make your own food, whether you're too busy for that or don't have an aptitude for it so you want to buy it, I, I want to make sure that this is sort of an all-inclusive, not, not any specific video is going to please everyone, but I think to present a, a menu, um, a, an, a collection of offerings within my videos that anybody, wherever they fall on that spectrum, will be able to find something that is valuable to them. That's been my goal with this channel. And that means that sometimes I will create videos or recipes or review products that don't appeal to people necessarily. And I, it's my hope, though, that they'll understand that that's okay. Oh, this one doesn't apply to me. I'm just going to skip that. Sadly, that's not always the case. Sometimes I get some pretty mm, unkind comments on some of these videos and no more than the ones that I got on the Cool Whip or Making Your Own Whipped Cream video last week. It was disappointing, the reaction from a lot of people. People saying that I was insulting, because I was showing how to make whipped cream, or that I, I had one person say that I'm trying to um, drive people to a path of bad health or something along those lines by, by showing how to make a substitute for Cool Whip. And I just wanna address a couple of those comments just so people understand why I made that video. First, there are so many recipes that I see out in the Keto for Beginners groups on Facebook where people are using sugar-free products like sugar-free Jello, which I talked about, or Jello pudding, which I talked about a week or two ago. I showed the, the cheesecake version and just how incompatible I feel that is with a, a ketogenic lifestyle, but also the sugar-free Cool Whip. 
And I thought, why? why? Why buy this when it is so easy to make? And I know that a number of you already know how to make whipped cream, but there are a lot that don't. I mean, it's certainly, if you know how to make whipped cream, there was a time when you didn't know how to make whipped cream. So why is it insulting that I'm showing some people how to make whipped cream? Because at one time, you didn't know. Furthermore, I think that a significant number of people who are either Gen X or younger probably couldn't tell you the difference between Cool Whip and whipped cream. They were sort of synonymous to all of us. In fact, if someone said, go get some whipped cream, I would have gone out and gotten Cool Whip because I didn't really recognize that there was a difference between the two. So I wanted to show that there is a difference between the two. One has got all kinds of crazy ingredients. The other, super easy to whip up at home, maybe two ingredients, cream and a sweetener. So I will continue to do videos like that, whether people find them insulting or not, because I think it's important to expose certain products that are kind of either positioning themselves as keto or low carb or keto friendly, or that people just assume are keto friendly. I mentioned the Jell-O sugar-free pudding. I've mentioned now the sugar-free Cool Whip. The other thing I see people posting recipes with pretty much on a daily basis are the Mission Tortillas. Now in my epic tortilla review, I reviewed the Mission Tortillas. I'm not sure which part that was. There was three parts to it. I think I reviewed 26 different tortillas and did glucose testing on all of them. Really kind of burnt out on that series after, after that. But Mission was one of the ones that I think it had the highest glucose spike of any of them. And I've tried a few different Mission tortillas, including their street tacos, and every single one of them, over 30 points, over 30 milligrams per deciliter of glucose movement. Additionally, I think they all contain either soybean oil or canola oil. I forget which one it is. But I find that whenever I have soybean or canola, I, I feel it. I feel it in my knuckles. I feel the inflammation. They start feeling puffy. Lots of times I'll feel it in my lower back or my knees. So Mission, I would say don't, don't buy Mission. And I'm not here to just throw Mission under the bus. What I am here to do, though, is encourage people test your glucose. See how things affect you. And for me, the Mission Tortillas, not a good thing. So the two brands of tortillas that I like that are relatively easy to find in grocery stores are the Olay Extreme Wellness and La Banderita. Both of those have a pretty gentle impact on my blood glucose and neither of them cause me inflammation because they don't have soybean or canola oil. So if you are out on any of these Facebook groups and you see people using Mission Tortillas, I would tell you the recipe does not require that it be Mission Tortillas. I would go with one of those other two brands that I mentioned. Another thing that came out of me doing that Cool Whip video is I started getting all of these requests to do other junk food or fast food sort of clones. And I don't know that I'm going to do that, mostly because I don't remember what a lot of these things taste like. Back very early on in this channel, I had come up with a McGriddle clone that I thought tasted pretty much spot on to a McGriddle. But now that I'm five and a half years into this journey, I don't remember what a lot of these things taste like. I mean, there are fast food restaurants that I haven't been to in 20 years. And certainly I've had almost no fast food in the last five and a half. I think the only thing that I've had have been two instances of Taco Bell in the last five and a half years. And one was an instance where Terry said, hey, I'm going to Taco Bell, you want me to get you anything? And that's wonderful that she made the offer, but it's also a, a temptation I can't resist. And I decided I want a bean burrito, that's it. Just a bean burrito, not gonna hit the whole family meal like I normally would, but just a bean burrito. And I am pretty sure I felt some inflammation after that. Didn't knock me out of ketosis, but ugh, I didn't feel great. And then another time it was just sort of poor planning. We were doing some work at Courtney's apartment and I didn't bring along any keto bars or anything like that. We hit a point, we were there longer than we expected. There was a Taco Bell not that far away. So we went to Taco Bell and I had a beef burrito. But that's it, two burritos. That's the extent of the fast food restaurant food I've had in the last five and a half years. So trying to rely upon my memory of what certain foods taste like so that I can make a clone 
can't really do it. And I'm not especially willing to go out and try one of these things at this point in my life, at this point in my keto career, just so that I can try and make a clone of it. That said, I, I can think of two clone recipes that I've done that I'm pretty proud of. I'll put them in the end card, you know, when we got stuff over here on the side. So uh, check them out if you want. Now, looking down at my list, I see that I had one more topic that I was going to cover. And I suspect that it's going to be maybe a smidge controversial. And I also expect that it's probably a topic I would spend about 10 minutes on. And I just don't think we've got time for that in this podcast. So I will save that one for next week. There's your little teaser. But that then is going to be the end of this video. Like I said, I'll put a couple of my other videos over there, probably McGriddle up there and KFC coleslaw underneath. And uh, if you're not from the U.S., you may not know what a McGriddle is, but it's pretty tasty. Anyhow, like I said, that is it. As always, thanks for spending a little bit of time with me. Thanks for listening, and thanks for watching.